this holy month of Rajab and to understand or towards the understanding that this is a secret of the seventh month and the importance of seven and the realities of seven which are numerous. If we take that seven by the power of only Allah and the power in which Allah moving them through base nine understanding, it gives us the number 63. So nine times seven is 63. They move through the powers of nine. The first surah after Allah dressed them from one to twelve, then Allah took them to a level of surah nine being their first surah. They dress them from Baba Tawbah to enter into surah nine, dress them from nine, then take them to surah 18, make them to be dressed from Ashab al Kaf and the understanding of the 18th surah, then 27th surah, surah Al-Nam, and the importance of innahu uh, al-Sulaiman, innahu bismillahir rahman rahim from 27 to 36 to 45 to 54, and into then, now Rajab starts and becomes the 63rd surah, surah al-Munafiqeen. We go to 30, 63rd name, of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Hafi, Sayyidina Hafi, the welcoming, 63rd name of Ismullah al-Qayyum, the self-existing one. So I mean for Qayyum to open for the servant is under the authority of Sayyidina Hafi, the welcoming of that reality. So by knowing the name of Prophet is the key to that Ismullah, that it's like a lock it only opens with the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad Then it takes about Surah Munafiqeen and the summary of its understandings. Then the Tajali, that there were 12 hijabs in which Allah when creating the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad for every hijab, he was giving a tajalli and nazar address upon the reality of that light of Nur Muhammad In this month, for 6,000 years, Allah was dressing the light of Sayyidina Muhammad with the zikr of Subhana man huwa khalaq nur The glory be to the one who creates the light. Because of that reality, they were inspired and Uliya were inspired. That's the month that they go into seclusion. The seventh month they enter in. Why? Because there is a zikr of Subhanahu Man Huwa Khalaq al When Allah is dressing because Allah has no time. Is that Allah when they're talking about these 12 hijabs, is Allah is always dressing Prophet from that reality. So that if Subhanahu Man Huwa Khalaq al the month in which Allah is, is bringing the reality and dressing the secrets of light, then they go in into seclusion and that is the, from the understandings of the power of the month of Raja, that Allah is releasing it in immense light. So then that's the month in which to do your zikrs, do your practices, whatever you can do more of charity, do more of being of service, more of making your ibadah and your worshipness, to be dressed by those realities and blessed by those realities, fasting in those months, fasting in the month of Rajab, Shaban and Ramadan. From their deeper knowledges of Allah is that there are three hearts. There's a divine heart for us just to understand because the Kalam can't understand these realities so it's a very low level to bring out for people to understand through words that there is a, a, a divine essence and then there is the Muhammadan reality and then the Adamic. So the Divine Essence, with whatever it is that is unknown to us, is a hidden secret wanting to be known. So Allah is a hidden secret wanting to be known. Rajab is that month, subhanam man huwa khalaq al-nur, 
at that moment Allah wants to be known. And then this might of creating light is now boom, the spark is in Raja. And the secret of what Allah wanted to create was what Allah gave to us of an understanding of Raja. That I was a hidden treasure, I wanted to be known, I'm going to spark this light that all this creation will be known by this reality. So we call the divine essence and divine light. As soon as the tajallis of Rajab are dressing that reality, then Prophet ﷺ comes to teach us the next month, the eighth lunar month is Shahban. And this is the month of Sayyidina Muhammad Why? Because from the three realities of the heart that the Muhammadan light is the light in which Allah opened in Raja. Allah wants to be known and will be known in Shabban or in the reality of Muhammad Rasulullah So the spark, what they call the seed because they don't understand the reality. The spark comes in Raja. And Allah wants to be known. And that's the lahir Allah. It wants to be known as soon as Shabban comes, it becomes Muhammadun Rasulullah. So it means that this light that wanted to be known in Rajab was the spark of Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah addresses it, blesses it, puts a tajari upon it. So Shabban becomes the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu So then between Rajab and Shabban is the secret of Allah, Allah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu This is now the Muhammadan heart in Shabban. That's why again the majesty of Shabban, the dressings and the blessings of, of Shabban. Then uh, Prophet Sassim described that I am from Allah and creation is from me, my light. So then Ramadan is the Adamic light. The secret of Ramadan is the birth of the Adamic light that from the light of Muhammad Rasulullah Allah will bring all creation into existence. And that's Hadith al-Jabr. What was the first thing that Allah created? The light of your Prophet, the light of your Rasul before Adam and, and between clay and water. Means before the Adamic light, the light of Prophet was created. That was the Raja. It manifested in the secrets of Shabban and all of creation manifests in the reality of Ramadan. From the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah this creation now begins to manifest. So the holiness of Ramadan and the reality of Ramadan is that Allah allowed us to manifest. It's our coming into existence and the only way to achieve its reality is through Siyam Ramadan. It's not through your fat, it's not through your praying, it's not through your zakah, it's not through anything that we can do to achieve its reality and its understanding. Not even the thankfulness of why Allah brought us into existence. So what Allah recommended and advised or ordered Prophet is have them to fast. Only through a state of siyam and fasting can we achieve the reward that Allah wants to dress us from. Raja, Shabban, it manifests in Ramadan. And that becomes the reality and the dress of our that's why Ramadan is always a rebirth, because it's under the authority of the ninth month. Ramadan will annihilate all the sins of the servant and all that they have put upon their reality and destroyed of their realities from what their origin was. Allah promised that if you fast in Ramadan, I will wash away everything and restore you like immensity of Ramadan is that everything will be destroyed and Allah will dress the servant as if new. 
and they return to the origin of their light. And SubhanAllah, a nation with two billion people, they fast and they committed to Ramadan. This is the extent of Allah's Rahmah on the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad There is not a nation on this earth that follows a prophet that does anything of that extent. They don't fast but two days and say we gave up Coca-Cola and we, we just lit. It's not, <laughs> it's not lit. the greatness. Allah wants to share the greatness of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa See, your nation, when people will be astonished that a month comes and two billion people immediately seal their, their mouth from food and water. This to show the, the, the ihtiram for Prophet Sallallahu it's Allah is not in need of it. He can give you the reward without it. He wants to show the greatness of Prophet even on the day of judgment to the other prophets. Look, your nations kept nothing. But look at my Habib and my beloved. His nation will to the day of judgment come to us, come to Allah's divinely presence, all have fasting. And kept their Ramadan, and kept their way of Ramadan. So the immensity of that light and blessings of that light, we pray Allah to see that month, give us a light and love to see that month and pray that these lights, Ya Rabbi, that we are weak servants and have the Qur'aji Sutta'if of Miskeen and Zahn and Jah. If not by your grace and your majesty, your Rahmah, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rabbi, dress us so from Subhanallah who are Khalaqan Nur and let that light to blossom within our hearts and to manifest all its secrets. And why you want it on the 27th of that holy month for Prophet Sassan to go back into that origin of light and take his physicality back into the ocean of that creation. What dressings and lights and blessings you gave to that reality led us to see that night of Israel and Miraj and all the barakah and the blessings that you have bestowed upon this holy month of Rajab and Laylat al Raqai that are only desires in Ayat al Maqsudi Walidat that we, you grant us your forgiveness and dress us for your satisfaction. For if Allah Azawajal should be satisfied with us, then humble. This is the greatest accomplishment in our, in our existence, inshallah. But when we're good and everything is great, we tend to forget that door. And Allah Azawajal's infinite rahmah and mercy as difficulty comes to us, sickness comes, mushkilat comes, and before you know it, we're at that threshold begging for an entry in and to be in the audience of Allah's immense Rahmah Sayyidina Muhammad I would not have said but that he Sayyidina Muhammad is an immense Rahmah and mercy from Allah I pray that Allah keep us in that company, keep us in that presence and that to take every difficulty and sickness and mushkila out the way as the earth being filled with all sorts of difficulty and people running from every direction. And they said a great fitna would come, a fitna and difficulty and mushkilat would come in which the one sitting is better than the one standing. And the one standing is better than the one moving. It means wherever you are, you'll be froze, freeze. Where if you should move, you move into difficulty. You see now the world is like that how much they want to live for a thousand years. As soon as you talk about some sort of a sickness, everybody's on lockdown. You can't come to our country, you can't get in the plane, you can't walk here, you can't do that. Put a mask on your face, rub alcohol all over your hands. And Allah save us from, from this difficulty. And death is coming to us, alhamdulillah. At least we sit at the table of Satan Muhammad. There is nothing here that uh, we should be trying to live for a thousand years. This is the abode of, of sadness and betrayal and difficulty. And we're asking for the abode of the presence of the Divine, the presence, and to sit at the table of Satan Muhammad. But if you have that love and that desire, what is there then to fear from? And they're all walking around with these masks, and oh, I've got to live, I've got to live, I've got to live a thousand more years. If in your heart you're like, what the heck? Who cares? The other people is ready to go. Then Allah says, no, maybe it's not your time. Just sit amongst them and who cares? If it's not your time, nothing can come to you. 
And if it is your time, there's not a mask on earth that's been created to help you. Mm. This thing goes into your skin. Mm. It transdermal. Mm. It's not even from the mouth. It's, this is Jundu Minas Sama. These are the soldiers of Allah, of the Jal, these virus. It just merely come into your skin and begin to penetrate into the pore. Come through the opening of your eyes. Through any, any, anywhere it wants, it has complete access. And, and that's why a deen comes to teach us. When, when uh, Nimrod, who was the oppressor for a prophet on earth, and the pressure became so bad, so bad, Allah didn't need anyone to bring an army and to fight with weapons and fight for destruction. He merely got fed up with that oppression. And he sent mosquitoes. And they said that the sky had become blackened by mosquitoes. That so much that the people were fearing, like an old-time West Nile virus a few, ten years ago, that the mosquitoes had filled the skies and they started to come down. And one of them was given an honor from Allah Zawajal <laughs> to go after Nimrod. <laughs> he said, you be the one. And that mosquito went right and up the nose and nostril of Nimrod. He planted himself and Allah Zawajal began to make the mosquito to grow to the size of a bee. And he was pounding onto the brain of that oppressor. And they said that he was hitting himself. Every type of medicine they gave, it didn't work. Until to take his pain, he was hitting himself so that to alleviate the pain, how Allah Zawajal wanted this oppressor to be under the suffering until he beat himself. And Allah made this mosquito to grow into like a bumblebee. From a bumblebee to the size of a, like a hummingbird. <laughs> Just pounding <laughs> until he beat himself so much into the head and that was the end of his life. Means when Allah Zawajal want to come against oppression, there is nothing, nothing that can stop. When Allah Zawajal decides it's enough, this material world is, is transgressing all limits and all bounds. And it's enough that Allah Zawajal re reveal and, and send what He wants to send. Where is there a mountain to hide or to run to? There's nothing. And the only place we can run is into our heart. Make sure it's clean, make sure it's something pure, make sure that the intention is right. Ya Rabbi, that I'm the first to admit I'm an oppressor to myself. You don't have to send any mosquitoes. You don't have to send any hummingbirds <laughs> to take a clue. I know that I'm oppressing myself, but I'm asking for the Rahmah Sayyidim. I throw myself upon his threshold and ask that his Rahmah intercede for me. That correct me. What's the benefit of the greatness that you gave if that greatness can be used for a slave? And Allah Zawajal's definite reply is then to the threshold of my most beloved. That his nazar be upon you, his blessings be upon you, that every gaze and every benefit to dress upon you and take away that oppression and that bad character. We pray that Allah Zawajal gave us the strength of faith and the strength of character, good character. And in the end, everybody is going to return back to Allah Zawajal. But in what condition is important? We want to return in a condition of love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the love of Allah This is the love that we want and Allah ordered, if you want my love, follow. That following is not from the mind, it's from the heart. That to be our shaqeen and lovers, that nothing to stop us, Ya Rabbi, we're coming only for that love. That we're not stopping until we reach this destination of love and every obstacle of love is blocking us from inside and out. That we need your support to take us to that destination, inshallah. Amen. Means that uh, many people, when they hear these things, they don't understand because there's so much having fun. And akhir people that they're just continuously in a crushing and difficult state, that there's no relief until Allah begin 
the reality of that saqi in which only Allah can begin to send the fires that are coming from the heart of Prophet in which it intoxicates them. Like anesthesiologist, somebody who gives you a relief from pain. So the time that they spend in remembrance and zikr, a pain is being taken away from them. An intoxication of that love is, is, is trying to empower them to continue to go, to continue to go, and to continue to move and not to give up, not to relief or to lose hope and enter into oceans of despair. Means this only Allah, kalam al only Allah is so immense and it's such a beatific taste that you have to feel with your heart all these salawats. Think of all the difficulties and mushkilats that are surrounding us and many who we know because of the communication with them, the difficulties they face is that to embrace that difficulty. Think, oh my gosh, the difficulty that all of this is happening, that I don't need to know so much why, Ya Rabbi, but grant me a relief from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, that he dispensed that rahma, that light, and that energy within my heart and my soul. I don't need to see anything. Don't, don't preoccupy myself, and I have to see, I have to see, oh, I don't see anything. Because as soon as you enter into that, you become so lost in trying to see, you didn't feel. And the feeling is what's important. It's through your soul, open up these praisings through the soul, in which you feel the vibration of what's being recited. That you feel your soul, most definitely, 100,000% is in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam. That everything and every electron must be circumambulating its nucleus. And the one, the one from oceans of Wa'id, there is one universal atom and that nucleus is Sayyidina Muhammad And every, everything from creation <coughs> is circumambulating that reality. So we're all in that reality. We are all facing Sayyidina Muhammad we just have to wake up and know it. As soon as we know it, to feel it with our soul and ask that, that dress us from that, that light, bless us from that light, take away every type of difficulty, at least temporarily let me to lose sight of that and to be lost in this ishq and this love that you have granted to me, inshaAllah. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.